okay another important type of coordinates is spherical coordinates the spherical coordinates is uh, important especially for the problems of antennas and propagation and uh, also it is important for the problems uh, with spherical symmetry like spheres or uh, conical shapes uh, in spherical coordinates any point in the space is determined by its distance from the origin which is r uh, the angle theta which is the angle uh, from the z axis to the line from the origin to the point the angle theta and the angle phi which is the angle from the x axis to the projection of the line from the origin to the point B on the XY plane. So any point in the spherical coordinates is determined by R, theta, and phi. Uh, theta is a constant. If I assume theta is a constant value, this will represent an R rotating around the z-axis to form a cone. If I assume that phi is a constant, it will represent a plane which has a constant angle with respect to the x-axis. So phi is a constant, is a plane passing by the z-axis and has an angle phi with respect to the x-axis. The plane R is constant is effectively the surface of the outer sphere of a radius R. So R is a constant is the surface of a sphere. So these are the different planes which are consisting the intersection of these planes consisting the point B. If we are going to assume we have infinitesimal volume in spherical coordinates, the arms of this uh, infinitesimal coordinates would be as follows. In the direction of R, it would be dr. In the direction of theta, it would be r d theta. And in the direction of phi, it would be r sin theta multiplied by d phi. So, the total volume of incremental volume in this case it would be r squared sin theta dr d theta d phi. r squared sin theta dr d theta d phi. And this incremental volume has six faces. So, if you are looking for the three front faces here, uh, the first face would be r squared sine theta d theta d phi r squared sine theta d theta d phi the upper face here it would be dr multiplied by r sine theta d phi so r sine theta dr d phi and the side face would be dr multiplied by r d theta so r dr d theta so these are the phases of incremental volume in the, in the spherical coordinates if we have a point in the spherical coordinates and it is required to find the equivalent values in Cartesian coordinates we can obtain by transforming as follows the value of x would be the projection of r in the xy plane and the projection of this projection on the x plane so it is r cosine theta the projection on the xy plane which corresponds to rho in cylindrical coordinates and this rho is projected in the x-axis so it is rho cosine phi so it is r sine theta 
Cousin Ford. R sin theta cosine Ford. Similarly, the projection of the point B on the y axis would be the projection of R on the xy plane, which is R sin theta. And the projection of this R sin theta on the y axis, so it would be R sin theta sin phi. Y equals R sin theta sin phi. And the projection of the point in spherical coordinates on the z axis it would be R cosine theta. So this how to convert from spherical coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. The reverse is very simple. Assume that we have as a point in x, y, z. First of all, the value of r is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And uh, the angle theta can be determined as cosine minus 1, the value of z over the value of r. So cosine minus 1, z over r where r is the square root x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And effectively the value of theta has a range from 0 to 180 or 0 to pi. Okay. Now the angle phi is the angle of the projection of r in the xy plane with respect to the x axis. So it is 10 minus 1 y over x taking into consideration which quarter uh, is suitable for this y over x. If y and x are positive, so we are in the first quarter. If y and x are negative, we are in the third quarter. If y is positive and x is negative, we are in the second quarter. If y is negative and x is positive, we are in the fourth quarter. Okay? So, this is how to find out the angle phi in terms of y and x. If you are going to transform the direction, the unit direction, in the direction of R and the direction of theta and the direction of Y, to the direction X and Y and Z. So, in this case, the unit direction in the direction R equals the unit direction in direction X multiplied by sin theta plus sin phi plus the unit direction in direction of Y multiplied by sin theta sin phi plus the unit direction in z direction multiplied by cosine theta. Similarly, we can find a theta and a phi. On the other hand, if the problem is presented in ax, ay, and zz, and it is required to present it in spherical coordinates, we can say that ax equals ar multiplied by sine theta cosine phi plus a theta cosine theta cosine phi minus a phi sine phi. So, in this case, az dot ar is cosine theta. az dot a theta is minus sine phi. And az dot a phi is zero. So, this helps to transform the unit vectors from spherical to Cartesian or from Cartesian to spherical. Okay. As an example, if I have a vector g equals x multiplied by z over y in the direction x, and it is required to represent this field vector in terms of spherical coordinates. So, first of all, we are going to transform x, z, and y to the corresponding r and theta and phi. So, in this case, we say that x would equal r sine theta cosine phi, y would equal r sine theta sine phi, and z would equal r cosine theta. Okay? Now, to convert ax, we are going to say ax equal a r sine theta cosine phi plus a theta cosine theta cosine phi plus a phi multiplied by minus sine phi. So in this case, we are going to see that 
the G R component or the component of G in the direction R is the R component here sine theta cosine phi and the value of x z over y x z over y x r r so r squared sine theta cosine theta cosine phi so r squared sine theta cosine phi over y so r squared over r it would be 1 r and sine theta will be moved, moved by sine theta so it would be r cosine theta cosine phi and we still have sine theta cosine phi so it is r sine theta cosine theta cosine squared phi over sine phi okay g theta once again this is r cosine phi cosine theta over sine phi multiplied by cosine theta cosine phi so it would be r cosine squared theta this cosine this cosine cosine squared phi over sine phi finally g phi would be r sine theta cosine phi over sine theta sine phi so cosine phi over sine phi multiplied by cosine theta multiplied by minus sine phi so minus sine phi here so it would be minus r cosine theta cosine phi by combining these pieces we can say that g in spherical coordinates is r sine theta cosine theta cosine squared phi over sine phi or in other words cotan phi over sine phi uh, in direction of r so r cosine theta sine theta cotan phi in direction of r plus r squared cosine squared theta cosine squared phi over sine phi so we have taken cosine theta cosine phi is a common factor so the remaining part cosine theta cosine phi in direction of theta and here cosine theta cosine phi is common factor so minus a phi so in this case g would equal r cosine theta cosine phi multiplied by sine theta cosine phi in direction of r plus cosine theta cosine phi in direction of theta minus a phi okay all right now we have completed the review of the vectors and the review of coordinate systems we can go now to the first problem in electric and magnetic field and electromagnetic fields which is Coulomb's law for the force between electric charges let us see you in the next video all right